so hey guys I am out here at Mount McKay on a Saturday with my fat bike and we're going to do a little exploring around here so there's a trail that runs along the base of the mountain that we're going to take that takes us to the road to the lookout we're going to go up part way of the road to the lookout and then there's a trail that goes on the back side of Mount McKay and then comes out over here uh, and we'll come down some of the down the ski hill runs back to the car and uh, I don't know time wise I'm guesstimating it's gonna take about two hours between two and three hours so uh, we're gonna get started here I think it's all going to be this grown in. If it is, it's going to suck. Fortunately, right away, I got an uphill. I'm not even warmed up. much rain that one section there is just all the soil has been washed away and uh, so I got the chest strap on today and normally it doesn't work well on really bumpy terrain it bounces around so much but today I've uh, tightened the straps as tight as I can get them so I think it might make a difference I might make the less of a jarring have to see when I look at this video after. It's almost, I've kind of got it so tight that it's a little bit uncomfortable, but hey, if it makes for a better picture, it'd be worth it. Okay, well, we have to uh, do the hardest part of the climb to Mount McKay Lookout. We're doing it on a 36 pound bike. Trade off being incredible traction. And lots of traffic on this road today. Makes sense though, it's Saturday, so if there's any day that people are going to come out and visit this lookout, it's a Saturday. So this has a easiest gear of uh, 2236, which is a nice easy gear. Nice easy gear on a lightweight bike. It's kind of strange. This is enjoyable to climb steep terrain with because it has so much traction. Even though it's 36 pounds. And I'm breathing in a lot of dust. Okay, I oh, made it up the hardest part. I forgot to bring money, but 
I don't think we'll have to pay because we're on a bicycle. So we get off the road and to the trail. So to the left here you go to Crescent Lake. I took you guys there a couple weeks ago. Today we're going this way. This should take us backside of Mount McKay into the ski hill. I've hiked part of this trail over from the uh, ski hill side and I think we're going to come on some pretty serious mud bogs. So part of this ride is to see if uh, I can ride it on my motorbike because on this bicycle I can just lift it and walk through the bushes around the bogs. If I get stuck in here on a 300 pound motorbike by myself, I'd have to walk out and call for help. Not sure if cell phones work on the backside here because just another 5k that way cell phones stop working. So I think there'll be a fair bit of uphill this way too, but it's, it'll be gradual. And then once we get to the ski hill, it'll be mostly downhill and it'll be quite steep. It's a ski run. Yeah, so that was fairly steep there, but now this is all gradual uphill. Just saw some bear, bear poop. Other downside, we're going too slow and mosquitoes to land on us. You know what, this will be fun in the other direction. Especially in the winter time when this is snow. Man, I've been going non-stop uphill for a while now. Uh, so here's some of the mud bogs, drier than I thought there would be. Last time I came through here, it's on foot and these were like big huge pond type puddles. So on a bicycle I can very easily go like this. I can manhandle this bike. My motorbike, not so much. Slowly drying up in here. fast enough to avoid the mosquitoes. Some bear tracks. Okay, we're here at the old ski hill. Yes, 
one out as well will be found in the snow. Chip sawdust. Okay, so now we go uphill again. There's two routes. There's one that's more gradual, but I'm sure it's like almost totally grown in. And then the more straightforward route is quite a bit steeper. I don't know if I'll be able to ride it. These are old ski runs. That's the more gradual route there. And yeah, it's 100% grown in. It's an old uh, lift. Go check it out. This is either a T-bar, an old T-bar lift, I think. Oh, I was going to take a picture, but so freaking grown in here, actually. If we go from higher ground over here. Freaking shaking because of the exercise. Hopefully, uh, images don't come out shaky. <laughs> yeah, this one, we'll try up uh, the old lift route here. It looks more gradual. See, in the fall time when lots of this underbrush dies off, then yeah, I think this would be more enjoyable. We're in the easiest climbing gear. I don't want to ride that hard today. I'm we'll still get exercise pushing up the ski hill. Man, it's grown in up here. These are usually all trails and things going into these old ski runs. Ridden by quads and motorbikes and mountain bikes and people hiking. Barely tell there was a trail here before. So now we're gonna go check out the ridge line. Take the ridge line back to the lookout. We'll go down the lookout road and back the way we came. Okay, so we're on top of uh, the first plateau, the old ski hill. So there was a chairlift here that came up to this spot. Here's the view. So there are actual downhill mountain bike trails that go through here that uh, 
one of the cycling clubs or a group of cyclists asked the Indian Reserve if they could cut trails here and they're okay with that so and they've tried to make some west coast stuff with some uh, ramps and things that they built we'll probably come back and I'll make some downhilling videos with this bike uh, in the fall time yeah so here's the other view you get you get this incredible view and then you get industry built right beside uh, the Kamenisqua River good playing blue collar jobs that were this city was built on and those industries are slowly dying okay, the ridge line. it's a really cool spot over here uh, with rock that's fallen off of the cliff face over hundreds if not thousands of years and go check it out fat bikes great for climbing stuff like that almost makes it easy except for the physical effort part but just rolls over that shit Man, there's freaking bear tracks everywhere take a picture There's a noise. So all these bits of rock here have fallen off that cliff face over thousands of years. Built this little pile. It almost looks man-made. It's so perfect. Picture time. My gloves are sweaty, so they actually work on the seem to work on the touch screen when they first started my ride. They weren't. Didn't work. Whoa, that wasn't good. Especially with stupid expensive carbon bar ends. Nicely scuffed up. Okay, so we're gonna try and do the ridge line here now. I've never actually done the entire length of it. Hopefully it's doable. Come here in the winter time and snowmobiles come part way down here but then they turn around. So it's really rocky but in the winter time this will obviously get covered and uh, the sections that the snowmobiles don't do I'll be able to go over with snowshoes pack it down and then I'll be able to have myself a sweet little loop that's just right on the edge of town okay so here it gets unrideable so like yeah, if this all gets covered nicely with snow, fill in all these gaps between these rocks and snowshoe it in, this will be rideable in the winter time. There's a cable here, I don't know if that's to help people climb up if they wanted to climb. See this isn't rideable at all, but you know what? We got enough snow fill in these gaps and you snowshoe it in and let it harden these entire uh, uh, gaps can become rideable in the winter time I didn't realize it was so rough through here that's why people don't use it that much the shoes are starting to see their last days the velcro is Starting to let go. Ha. I thought I'd be able to ride a motorbike through here. Hard enough just to walk through here. Hope that's not a bear den in the winter time.
It's turned into much more of an ordeal than I expected it to. So I bent the rotor uh, let the bike go down one of the big rocks before I went down it and I fell over hit a rock and bent the rotor pretty darn good okay I had to change the battery on the camera and put on a new memory card fresh memory card yeah, it was turning into more of an ordeal than I thought it was gonna that's okay so right now this is what we're dealing with actually that'll make a nice photo Don't drop the bike because it's got a long way to fall. And it's taking forever to walk about one kilometer because it's so gnarly. Well, it wouldn't take much time at all to walk it, but having to carry a bike across it with me with a few hundred meter sheer drop beside us. Nice. So what exactly goes on here? Huh. How am I going to get the bike through here? and myself safely. And well guys, we're gonna have to turn around and go back. Fortunately, I'm not comfortable doing that. It's gotten just a little bit too gnarly at this section. It's kinda lame. Those are the brakes. So yeah, actually I don't think I'll be able to do that in the winter time either. So we'll be able to do a loop, but we'll have to go down to the road. Which will make it less fun. That's the dangerous stuff right there along the ridge. Here it gets, uh, it'll get less dangerous, but more physically challenging because we have to lift the bike over uh, large, large rocks.
rideable terrain more or less maybe not freaking tired lugging this bike up over rocks we get out in the open here try and bend back that brake disc and try and bend this brake lever back. And then we just have a three or four minute long uh, downhill back to the car. That's better. Yeah, the other one downside of uh, these, the clown shoe with uh, 4.8 butt is it uh, barely clears the brake caliper. But I'm running pretty low pressure, so it goes in pretty easy. But if you haven't pumped up, hard probably won't go in you'll have to let air pressure out and then pump it up <sighs> well, it's better than it was it's still not right gonna have to bring it to uh, my dealer it's got that little tool for straightening them so Downhill to the car.
the old snow making uh, pipes were still there. Yeah, I'm not going crazy, end of the ride, I'm tired. I don't want to crash the last five minutes of my ride. So drawn in. Back at the car, that ride definitely did not go as planned. Couldn't complete it as wanted and did some damage to the bike. Whew. Bent disc, we'll be able to get that bent back into shape, I believe. Yeah, so we went probably halfway down the ridge, 50% up, halfway up uh, to the lookout and then it just got a little too sketchy to do it carrying a bike with me. So in the winter time, yeah, we won't be able to do it the way I thought we had. We'll still be able to do a loop. We can ride along the road we did at the start, that gravel quad trail that goes through the woods. Um, there is another piece of land that we can theoretically sneak our way through, even though it's no trespassing. That way we avoid all of the pavement. We may be able to do that if snowmobile trails end up going through there. And then we'll go to the backside and then we can have shitloads of fun coming down uh, the runs here in the wintertime. So, yeah, thanks for watching.